In this problem, we're told a ski starts from rest and slides down a 28 degree incline 85 meters long. If the coefficient of friction is 0 0.09, what is the ski speed at the base of the incline? B, if the snow is level at the foot of the incline and has the same coefficient of friction, how far will the ski travel along the level? Use energy methods. So before we start this problem, let's go ahead and draw what's going on. So imagine this right here is going to be the incline, right? So here's our incline. And so we're going to have the skier go down this incline. And we know it's going to be at 28 degrees. So this angle right here is 28 degrees. So that's going to be that. And so we know also the length of this. This is going to be 85 meters long. So just write 85 meters long, right? So that's going to be this length. And so we also know, right, so at the base of this, the skier is going to go out some distance. And so we don't know what that is. I think that's what we're trying to find in B. So yeah, we're trying to find how far travels this. We can call this whatever, but just know it's going to travel some distance and then stop right here. So there's going to be three different points of our skier. Let's draw them there. So the skier is going to, uh, the skier is going to start here, then they're going to go here, and then they're going to end up here. So let's just focus on the first part for now. So what I'm going to do is label some different things on this uh, skier. So this is going to be V sub 1, right? I'm going to call V sub 1 the velocity in the beginning. This right here is going to be V sub 2. So the velocity at the beginning and the velocity at the end of this incline. And so we're also told uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction, or of friction, I'm just going to call it mu sub k. And we're going to say that equals 0 0.09, right? Because that's what they tell us. And so let's go ahead and solve this. So how are we going to solve this problem? So the way we're going to do it is by using energy. And so there's two main formulas that you need to know in order to solve this, which are potential energy, which is just P sub B, and then kinetic energy. So kinetic energy's formula is 1 half mv squared. Right, so this will find the kinetic energy and the potential energy is mgy. And so those are the two formulas that you need to know in order to solve this. So for A, what we're trying to find is the speed at the base of the incline. Right, so for A, speed of the speed at the base of the incline, which in this case I'm calling v sub 2, right? So we need to find v sub 2. And so the way we're going to do this is by taking the energy at the beginning and then setting it equal to the energy at the end, but we're going to have to subtract uh, the work due to friction, right? So the force of friction, the work due to that. And so the way we're going to do this is say, so what you want to do essentially is take your potential energy plus your kinetic energy at the beginning, right? So I'm going to write out the formulas. So I'm going to say 1 half mv1 squared, right? So this is 1, right? So in the beginning, right? Because v1 is the velocity at the beginning, plus mgy1. So it's potential energy in the beginning. And then what you're going to want to do is I'm going to do a space because I'm going to explain something in a second. But essentially, you want to set it equal to the end. Right, so 1 half mv2 squared plus mgy2, right? So we have potential energy at the end, kinetic energy at the end, and then kinetic and potential in the beginning. But there's one thing we have to take into account for. So if there was no friction in this problem, you would just set these equal to each other. But we also have to take into account the work, uh, the uh, like the energy lost from friction, right? So what we need to do is find the work that's lost due to friction, right? So imagine we have some energy at the beginning right? We go down and we lose this, right? And then it's going to be equal to this, right? So we have energy in the beginning, then we subtract this, it's going to go down, and then it's going to be equal to the energy at the end. So hopefully you understand that. So the hard part about this problem is finding the work that's going to be lost due to the friction, essentially. So the energy lost due to the friction. So how do we find that? So there's a few things you need to know. So hopefully from the last chapter, you know that work equals force times distance. So if we have a force, we can multiply by the distance, and that's going to give us the work or the energy that's lost. And so what is the force going to be? The force is going to be the force of friction, right? Because we have this coefficient of friction. There's some force of friction that's pushing up against it, and that's what we need to solve for. So the force of friction, right, that's going to be this force here. But what does that equal? Well, we know that's equal to mu sub k times f sub n. This is a formula you should know from a few chapters ago. And so essentially what we have to do is solve for these. And then we're going to plug it in this formula and be able to solve. So how do we do this? So we know mu sub k, right? Mu sub k is 0 0.090. What is f sub n? So if we draw a free body diagram of our person, right? We have mg going straight down. We have f sub n. I can't really draw it because there's not enough room. But f sub n, right? What is f sub n? Well, it's just going to be this force, right? mg times the cosine of theta, right? Because the sum of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to 0. And so we have 0 equals uh, the forces going up, which is f sub n minus mg times the cosine of theta. And so you should know how to you should know uh, how to do this based on the last chapter. So really f sub n is just equal to mg times the cosine of theta. Right? So if you don't know how to do that, I recommend learning, but essentially because this is the only force going downwards, so the normal force is mg times the cosine of theta. 
So what we can do is just plug that in for f sub n. So mg times the cosine of theta. So what's theta though? So the way this works is theta is just the same as your incline. So it's just mg times the cosine of 28. And so now we've got it like this. Uh, what we're going to want to do is, right, so this is the force of friction. But we also have, what we're trying to do is find the work, right? Because we got to plug in the work. So we have to multiply it by the distance. Because this is just the force, right? Just the f. We have to multiply it by the distance. What's the distance it's going to be traveling, though? It's going to be 85 meters because that's what it goes down. So multiply it by 85. And so this right here is going to be your work. So we just found this, right? And so what you should notice is we don't have the mass for this problem, but you'll see why we don't need it. So now what we can do is just plug it in. So I'm going to just rewrite this plus mgy1 minus the work we just solved for, this whole thing right here, 0 0.0. Actually, what I'm going to do is add this to the other side. So just imagine I'm adding the w. So really, uh, just adding it to the other side. So this is just going to be equal, and then I'm going to have it added right here. So let me just rewrite it. So mv2 uh, squared plus mgy2, and then it's going to be plus 0 0.090 times mg times the cosine of 28 times 85. So now we've got it like this, and what we're going to be able to do is go ahead and solve for v sub 2, right? Because notice what we're trying to solve. They want us to find v sub 2, the velocity at the end, and that's this variable right here. And so that's what we're going to need to solve for. And so what you should notice right away is that every single term here contains a mass, right? Everyone contains m, so we can just cross out the m from every single one of these terms. And so we don't have to deal with that, right? Because there's no mass given, so uh, we can just ignore that. So it's really just one half v1 squared. I'm actually not going to uh, write it out again, but uh, what we need to do now is determine what each of these variables are, right? We have v1, we have y1, we have v2, we have y2, uh, and those are the variables we need to find in order to solve this. So right here I'm going to write given, and so what are these variables? So let me write them out, v1, v2, uh, y1, y2. So we need all these variables in order to solve. So let's start with v1. So v1 is its velocity at the beginning, right? That's what we label this as, and so the velocity in the beginning is just zero meters per second. And the reason that is, is because they tell us we start from rest. So it's just zero meters per second. What's V2? So notice, remember that they're asking us to find the velocity at the end, and that's what V2 is. So we can say V2 equals question mark because that's what we're trying to find. What's going to be Y1? So we're going to have to do a little work for this one. Y1 is going to be our height at the beginning. So this height right here, and that's what we're going to have to find. Because we don't know it initially, but we can solve it using the ver or some stuff we're given. So we have to find Y1, right? Uh, let's write y2 down first though. So y2 is your height at the end. So at the end of our interval where v2 is right here. And so this is going to be zero, right? Because we start from some height and then we go to the bottom. So it's just zero meters. So that's that. Let's find y1 now. So how do we find y1? So if we're given an angle and we have the hypotenuse, we can find this side right here through trick. So we know the sine of an angle, right, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what's the opposite? It's going to be this side right here and the hypotenuse is 85. So it's just 0 over, over 80, or not 0, sorry, it's a variable, right? So x, imagine this is our variable x over 85. If we multiply both sides by 85, that right there is going to give us the x. And that's the height we're looking for, right? The height in the beginning. So it's really just 85 times the sine of 28. And so if you go ahead and plug that in your calculator, do 85 times the sine of 28, you should get 39.9. So 39.9. And so you can estimate it more. It's 39.905. I'm just going to use 39.9 here. So 30, uh, 39.9, and then it's going to be in meters, right? Because it's just a height. So these right here are all the variables that we need to actually plug in and solve this. So let's go ahead and do that. So 1 half times V1 we know is 0. So 1 half times 0 is just 0. So it's just going to be 0 plus G. And so G is just gravity, right? 9.8 meters per second squared times Y1, which is... 39.9, which is going to be equal to 1 half, 1 half times v2 squared, because we don't know that, so we're going to have to solve for that, plus g times y2, so 9.8 times y2. We know y2 is 0, so anything times 0 is just 0. So we really just have plus 0 0.090 times g, so 9.8 meters per second squared times the cosine of 28 times 85. So what we want to do here is uh, move this to their side. So the way we're going to do that is just by, right, so we just want to minus it. So if we minus it, we have 9.8 times 
minus 0 0.090 times 9.8 times the cosine of 28. And then you're going to want to go ahead and multiply that by 85. And that's just equal to 1 half V2 squared. So what you want to do now is just multiply both sides by 2. So imagine this whole thing right here is in a parentheses, right? Because we got to get rid of this 1 half. So if we multiply both sides by 2, that's going to be that. And then we got to get rid of the square. So square root both sides. That's going to get rid of that. So that's gone. And then just square root. So essentially, it's the square root of 2 and then parentheses, right? So big parentheses, 9.8 times 30, 9.9 .9 minus 0 0.09. Uh, times 9.8 times the cosine of 28 and then multiplied by 85. So if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get that it equals 25.488. You can round it however you want. I'm just going to round it to 25.49. Your teacher might want you to do different, so just listen to them. But 25.49 and then keep in mind this is velocity, right? And we use meters per second. We're using meters as our distance. So it's 25.49 meters per second. So this right here, your answer to A, the speed right here, right at the end of the base of the incline is 25.49 meters per second. So I'm going to go ahead and erase what's on screen so we can do B, but if you need it, go ahead and write it down because uh, it's important, right? You need to learn this stuff. So just write it down if you need it, but I'm going to be erasing it. So let's go ahead and move on to B. So let me go ahead and redraw this right here. Actually, I'm not going to redraw the incline. I'm just going to start from the base. So just imagine it's flat right here. So this is where... So imagine if this was the base, right? I'm just drawing starting from here. So this right here is where the person was. And now they're going to end here. So remember, they uh, they tell us that they're going to start here. There's going to be some friction. And then they're going to come to a stop. And we're trying to find this distance here. So that's what we're going to be solving for. And so how are we going to do this? So let's label what we know first. So this is V sub 2, right? We know the velocity here. And so we knew this was equal to 25.49. So it's going to be 25.49 meters per second. That's going to be the speed right here. And so what about the speed here? Uh, you can call this V sub 3. And so the speed here, keep in mind it's coming to rest, right? So at the end, when it's at rest, it's going to go start at the speed. Friction is going to slow it down some distance, and it's going to go to rest. So V sub 3 is just going to be 0 meters per second, right? Because it's going to rest. And so keep in mind mu sub k, or the coefficient of kinetic fric or of friction, uh, it's going to be the same as the last one. So they told us it was 0.09. So just keep that in mind. And so you can solve this using uh, different problems, right? You could use it using uh, kinematic equations and stuff, but they want us to use energy for this. So we're going to do it that way. And so now we can just go ahead and solve, right? So the way we're going to do this is the same exact way as last time, right? But keep in mind when we do this, uh, the formulas for potential energy and kinetic energy, we don't need potential energy because keep in mind it's mgy. And y is the height. But keep in mind the white, the or the height is going to be the same for both. They're both going to be 0. So when we plug in 0, it's really just going to be nothing, right? So we don't need to take into account the potential energy, really just the kinetic energy in this formula, right? So we have 1 half mv2 squared, right? So in the beginning. And then we have to minus the work as a result of the friction, like we did in the last one. And then set it equal to 1 half mv3 squared. So let's add this to the other side, actually. So 1 half mv2 squared is going to be equal to 1 half mv3 squared minus, or it's going to be plus, right? So we're plusing it plus w. So keep in mind what w is. Again, work equals force times distance. So the force is just the force due to friction, again, just like last time. So the force of friction is equal to mu sub k times f sub n. What's f sub n going to be this case? So the last one we were at an incline, so it was kind of difficult. It's a little bit tricky, but this one is just going to be mg because we only have the force uh, due to gravity. So it's just mg. So that's all we got to worry about in this one. So the force of friction is just going to be mu sub k times mg. And then work is force times distance. So there's also a distance here. So work equals mu sub k times mg times the distance. So... That's that. And then what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and plug this in. So 1 half mv2 squared equals 1 half mv3 squared plus mu sub k times mgd. So let me write that. So again, we don't have the mass, so these all cancel. So 1 half times v2 squared, which is just 25 point. 49 squared 
is going to be equal to one half times uh, this, right? V3 is the velocity at the end, which is just going to be zero. So zero cubed is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So this is just zero. So it's just going to be equal to mu sub k. Uh, mu sub k, right? This is supposed to be on the m. It kind of got over on the other side. So 0 0.090 times g, which is 9.8, multiplied by the distance. So keep in mind what they're asking for here. I didn't really specify it. I'm sorry about that. But we're trying to find this distance here, right? And so the way we're going to be able to do that is because we have the d right here, the distance uh, that it travels from the work. So that's what we're trying to solve for. In this case, the d, right? The distance it travels, that's what we need to find. So if we're solving for it, we can just divide both sides by this. So 0 0.090 times 9.8, right? Because we're trying to find the distance it travels. And we have this distance it travels right here in this variable. And when we plug it in the equation, it's right here. So sorry about not specifying that earlier, but essentially you're just going to do 0.5 or 1 half times 25.49 squared. And then divide that by 0 0.09, multiply that by 9.8. And so, yeah, that's going to be your distance. If you go ahead and do this, you're going to get 368.333, so on. I don't know how your teacher wants you to round it. You can just round to 368, right? So just say it's 368 meters, or if they want you to round to the tens place, so four, or 370 meters, uh, whatever your teacher wants you to do, just listen to them. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be about 368 meters. Right, so we just rounded there. So the distance it's going to travel from the second part, or your answer to B, is 368 meters. So this right here is going to be your answer to B. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.